based in New Jersey, there is nothing better than coming to Miami uh, in February. I think for you guys it might be a little chilly today, but uh, for us this is this is heaven. This is uh, this is perfect. Uh, thanks so much for coming out. Um, I know uh, sometimes Miami traffic is a, a little difficult. I think some of our guests are a little bit late. Um, but for us, it's just uh, great to get together with everyone from Santa. You guys are great and uh, supportive for our Mercedes-Benz brand, and uh, we certainly appreciate it. So it's nice um, when we can come down here and uh, share some of the, uh, the new things that we have going on. Um, busy time at Mercedes. Um, we've had a, a, a huge year. Uh, in 2014, if you've been following what we've been doing. Uh, we introduced our new GLA. The GLA is sort of our one-two punch, if you will, as part of the entry portal into our brand. Uh, if you remember the CLA that we came out with in 13, this is the SUV version of this. Um, this is a car that is really doing phenomenal for us. Um, it starts just around $31,000. Uh, a great gateway to our brand, but also a great combination of utility, uh, of youthful styling, and it goes into one of the, the hottest, se hottest segments of the market, which is the, uh, the small SUV segment. So this car is really doing well. And the conquest that we have for CLA and GLA, uh, just about three-fourths or 75% of the customers are brand new to Mercedes. So if you look at that price point, you also have Hondas, you have uh, domestics, you have all these other um, high-spec options that are in that price point, but what we can give them is a Mercedes-Benz experience. So the same uh, kind of treatment that you would have if you're an S-Class customer, you can get this if you're new to the brand. And based on our uh, trajectory, when we get new customers into the brand, we tend to keep them for life. We have some of the highest loyalty uh, factors uh, of any luxury brand that's in the space. We have a new C-Class. Um, this is our baby Benz that we used to call it, if you remember the 190 in the C-Class. Uh, well, our baby is all grown up now and proudly made uh, in Alabama. So the first time that a Mercedes-Benz production car has been built here in the States. Uh, since we made cars for a short amount of time last century at the Steinway Piano Factory, which was in Long Island City. Uh, the reason why we didn't continue with that, unfortunately, uh, the factory burned down, but we won't, uh, we won't get into that. <laughs> so we're really proud to have a C-Class here, and that car is really doing phenomenal. And then probably, uh, or arguably, one of the most beautiful cars that we've ever produced, which is our, uh, our new S-Class Coupe. That car went on sale uh, late last year, absolutely doing phenomenal. Um, I may hint that there may be a drop top version of that car coming. Uh, I think it's a perfect Miami car, um, but, but something that's really doing well. And I think absolutely puts an exclamation point on our styling direction. So you see that it's sort of a, a new face for Mercedes, uh, and this is the new way forward. Uh, our sales, just I won't go into too much of that. Uh, we're up about 6% year over year. Uh, luxury is continuing to outpace the, uh, the general market, and we're just seeing this trend continue as the economy improves. Go to the next one. Um, a little glimpse into the future. Obviously, we're the inventor of the motor car. We're a little humble when we talk about that, but we did invent the car, despite what anyone else tells you, uh, in 1886. And if you think about it, the car is one of the, the true inventions that changed society and mankind as soon as it was introduced, right? It brought cities together. Um, it replaced the horse. Um, if you talk about alternative powertrain, the car was effectively the alternative powertrain versus the horse. Um, it was an answer to the things that horses leave behind in cities, which was a real health hazard. But it also, it brought people together. It gave people freedom. It gave people mobility. Um, it inspired lots of great music that we had in the 50s. But, the, but the, the cool thing about the car is it's still relevant. It's still a technology from um, the past century that is still inspiring uh, new generations. And the, what's great about the car, especially with autonomy and the influx of technology, is that what this car shows is basically two generations ahead. So if you look at our uh, standard production lines, we're usually about seven years from one model cycle into the next one. This car is all about autonomous driving. You've heard a lot about that. That's sort of the fusion of technology and engineering together. But what this car also has is a great complement of analog features as well as digital features. So there's things like wood. Um, the interior of this car, you see the rear-facing seats. You can face each other. The reason for that, um, there are times, and we know this in Miami traffic, we all like driving down South Beach with the top down and sort of music blaring, getting a little bit of attention. But there are also times when you're on 95 or, or you're coming down to Miami Beach when the drive isn't that great. Right? And it's not that exciting. There would probably be other things that you could use your time more 
uh, effectively. What this car does is if you see the steering wheel just kind of folds away uh, and the car will autonomously drive so you can kind of turn around and let the, uh, the car do the driving for you. What's also cool about this car, um, you see these LEDs that are here. Now what's, what's great about autonomy is you've seen these cars that can drive themselves uh, from one section to another. But what this car really shows is the interface between the vehicle and people. So how do people know if the car is driving autonomously? How do they know if the car actually sees them? This car is designed with the acceptance of autonomy both from a legal standpoint, from an infrastructure standpoint, wraps that all up together and is just a vision of what cars will be in the future. But I, I will say that uh, we don't take an approach that it's gonna be like a training-like experience. We will still have a steering wheel in all our cars. So I know for, for those of us that do like to drive, you could just fold the steering wheel up, but for the times that you don't like it, you can let the car do it uh, in as safe manner as possible. So real inspiration. Uh, and it's safe to say autonomy is sort of like the space race of the auto industry, right? Every manufacturer is trying to, uh, to get there first to show you. About 80% of what you see in this car you actually have today uh, on the S class and throughout the model lines. Uh, what we need to wait is for the infrastructure as far as government regulations, uh, traffic lights, and what roads can um, benefit to, uh, to make full use of this technology. So real exciting stuff. Next one. Now, when it comes to today, um, Obviously, we're a luxury brand, uh, and our customers, we have a, a, a big set of customers that want something more. Um, and really, what we've done is we've designed a two-pillar strategy for our next generation of, let's say, dream cars, if you will. These are the cars that really instill the aspiration in enthusiasts. And we do this in two different ways. We have uh, AMG and driving performance. So these are uh, for powerful people that love performance. Um, they love to go quickly, they love the, the craftsmanship, uh, they love all the, uh, the high, they're high performance people in every part of their life, but they also want to have a high performance car, and, and Brandon will get the intel a little bit into that. And then a new section is the Mercedes Maybach. You may remember the Maybach was a standalone brand that we had here. Um, dates back to the 30s, we brought it back here in the early 2000s as a standalone. And now we have a new version of that where it's a sub-brand of the Mercedes. So we actually have a version of this out there, it is the S-Class Maybach. Effectively, this car is the ultimate in exclusivity for Mercedes-Benz. It's about eight inches longer. Uh, this car is really all about the back seat. Uh, it's a car meant to be driven in, and it's an absolute uh, sensory experience going down the road. So those are, that's just a snapshot of what we're doing at Mercedes-Benz. You're gonna see um, lots coming from these three different directions uh, moving forward.